You can hear more from Roots at the end of the show, but now one of the most controversial thinkers of the modern age. Slavoj Žižek has unorthodox views and a style to match. Newsnight's economics editor Paul Mason went to meet Žižek to discuss the economy, Marxism and Kung Fu Panda. In love with a traumatic fate and beauty who Shapir's remains an enigma. And somewhere in the middle, even this is Slavoj Žižek, not so much a philosopher as a phenomenon. He's been called the Elvis of cultural studies, a Slovenian intellectual who packs auditoriums around the world, the author of literally hundreds of articles and books, his expertise ranging from socialism to sci-fi. In X-Files, uh, why do so many things happen out there, all these freaks, aliens invading, to cover up the fact that nothing happens here between, between the guy and the girl, the two agents, no sex. This is why you need all that to fill this in. People love him for his bumbling persona. You really are an intellectual superstar to me, so I had to touch <laughs> But in reality, Zizek is an unashamed Marxist, even happy to flirt with Stalinism. But people still have this idea that this guy did some big crimes and so on. No? What fascinates me about Zizek is the way he combines communism with pop culture, a thinker very much rooted in the modern age. So how did a bearded Slovenian philosopher become a global superstar? Is it because we just can't take our Karl Marx anymore without a huge dollop of the matrix thrown in? Or is it because with the crisis of global capitalism, what he says makes sense? Growing fears of an economic recession have led to dramatic falls on the London faces stock. amongst workers heading home from the city of London no, tonight. Zizek has long predicted the fall of capitalism. And with the meltdown of the markets in 2008 and the downfall of villains like Bernie Madoff, his views on the financial crisis are really being listened to. What do you think about the narratives the media has constructed around this crisis? One of the aspects was this kind of a, how they call it, cheap moralization of the crisis. You know, it's not the system, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's made, made, of, made yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost felt, I think he's a disgusting creep, but I almost felt a certain sympathy for him. He was, for me, the ideal postmodern capitalist. At the same time, you ruthlessly speculate up to the limit, and of course, then half of your profits you give them to different foundations, you know, uh, starving children in Africa, undernourished in Guatemala, whatever. He, for me, is not a freak in the sense of, look, that disgusting guy who, with his greed, created the crisis. He's, for me, just a little bit too pure, pure embodiment of how the system itself pushed you. To function. And let's be clear, what you are saying is that Madoff is just the extreme form yes. of somebody like Bill Gates? Absolutely. This you is don't what, buy yeah. the philanthropic capitalist that, of that's, modern that's, times. No, that's, you know who gave the best argument against this? You know famous Oscar Wilde's text, The Soul of Man in Socialism. He says that philanthropy recreates again and again the very problem it tries to solve. He says, I feel it humiliating that I have to feel sympathy and care for the poor. I want a system where there would be no poor so that it would be possible for me to be a nice egotist. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. Zizek's passion is not just the faults of the market, but of ideology. He's fascinated by cinema, presenting a psychoanalytical history of the movies where he seems to inhabit the films themselves. I want a third pill. I'm fascinated by movies because I think that you get there in a way more real than our everyday reality, our ideology. If you want to get where do we stand ideologically, in a kind of a chemically cleansed way, you know, ideology at its purest, you get it in the movies. If you want to approach how beliefs function today, I claim the best example I can imagine is that stupid cartoon which I've seen five, six times because of my small son, uh, Kung Fu Panda. It's a crazy children's movie about a fat panda who wants to become a top Kung Fu warrior. Are you ready? I was born ready. Oh! 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 I'm sorry, brother. I thought you said you were ready. That was awesome. Let's go, Jack. 
You've used the example of Kung Fu Panda to explain the phenomenon of Silvio Berlusconi. Now, yeah. Silvio Berlusconi would be a kind of Kung Fu Panda fat guy, power. becomes playboy, yeah. Yeah. but everybody believes he is corrupt, but nevertheless he gets away with it. That's, if, if that's I... a wonderful formula. You know, sorry to interrupt, but uh, Marx Brothers also had a wonderful formula here. This guy looks as an idiot, acts as an idiot, but this shouldn't deceive you. This guy is an idiot. Berlusconi's wager is precisely this double cynical wager. He counts on the fact that if I act and look as a corrupted seducer, People will think that I'm not that, and this shouldn't deceive you, he is. And Zizek believes that it's no coincidence that as capitalism falls, Hollywood has turned to images of the apocalypse in films like The Road and, of course, 2012. What's the movie 2012 telling us about modern capitalism? What interests me is that it perfectly embodies the typical liberal hypocrisy. It's really a movie about how, again, 99% of the people uh, sh should die so that a stupid American family gets together. The lesson of catastrophe movies is usually to create through this external threat a big all-human solidarity. And the lesson is very sad, is that the only way to reach solidarity today is that we must almost all of us perish. But now that Zizek is being treated more seriously as a philosopher, many want him to jettison his media stunts. No, you call this porn, my God. In a recent film, he was seen lecturing in a rubbish tip. Don't mess with DNA, don't mess with nature, don't do it. This basic conservative, partly ideological mistrust of change. This is today ecology. Is it time for Zizek to grow up? You are a superstar. You've been described as a wild thinker. But people can I interrupt you here in a friendly yes. way. I think this very this will sound Stalinist, but no. I mean it seriously. This very description of me is the way to attack me. Yes. Because the idea is yes, what an amusing Let me have a go. Guy. Let yeah. me have a yeah. go. You've created it yourself though. Up to a point. I think that in today's situation where ideology is to an incredible part incredible amount part of our daily life because we breathe it we even experience it as non-ideology you have first to awaken people would you not rather be taken seriously what do you mean by taken seriously you know you pay a price to be taken seriously means also to be integrated into a certain kind of academic discourse that i don't like what is it you don't want to be integrated into academia uh, obviously this uh, 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 Would you like your own TV humanity. series? No, to be a kind of a soft, caring uh, liberal who worries about suffering and so on. That's your nightmare. Think, yeah, I think theory, brutally, theory has to have a priority. Slavoj Žižek, thank you. And thank you, and see you, either in hell or in, co or in communism. <laughs> now, of course, if you are a right-winger, you will say, but they are the same. <laughs> <laughs>